Uh, welcome from my side as well. So uh, today I would like to introduce you to our newest design and management software for integrated LD Systems installation solutions, Questra. So what is Questra? What is Questra and, and what can I do with it as a user? Well, first of all, it's a tool. It's a tool for integrators, for installers, for engineers. With Questra, you can access the device settings and parameters, including DSP processing, routing, and control. Um, we can also design end user panels, of course, uh, already in the early uh, stages of our project so that we can demonstrate it to our customers prior to purchase or any installation. Planning and preparing offline in Questra is, of course, a big benefit because we know that we can save some time when we do it offline. So once we're on site, we have more time for system tuning. And speaking of going online, deploying and going online is just a few clicks away. So what we do is that we upload the offline design to our online device. We uh, fine tune the system and the device settings and that's it, you're done. Project administration means that Questra gives you control. So you can actually create users, you can define roles, and you can also limit access to certain functions. So these are the three topics that we would like to concentrate on today. This is why we prepared a more detailed explication, uh, explanation of each one of them. So let's start with planning and preparing a project offline. In Questra, when we start a project, it's completely blank, so we have no design. What we start doing is dragging and dropping devices from the offline devices list to the project devices list. Of course, these are all those same elements, I mean, uh, Questra panels, of course, and amplifiers that we will be using on spot for our installation. When we click on EPA, for example, in Questra, the first expanded view that we see is the dashboard view. Now, this dashboard view is grayed out. There's no information because we are still offline. We did not connect to a device, so there is nothing that we can actually see. So we will see this uh, view uh, with more details once we're online. So let's just start doing what we usually do in a project at this early stage. So we define the inputs. We define how many inputs do we have. We define the name of those inputs, right? And then we can do the same with the output. So we discuss with our customers how many outputs do we need, how many zones are we going to have. And if we know what these zones actually are, we can rename them again in Questra. Because when we go to the mix matrix section, this makes things easier for us to route the input signal to the output. And we do this by simply enabling or disabling cross points. And once we're in the mix matrix, it's a good moment for me to explain to you how we create and manage presets within Questra. So a typical preset would be to send one input to all outputs, right? This, for example, CD, input to all outputs. So what I do is that I configure my mix matrix, select one cross point. I can add it to a partial device preset, name this preset, and that's the way I create the first one. Then what I do is simply add other elements to the same preset. And if you missed how this is done, you can do it again with the second preset, the DJ to all. So I select DJ to all outputs, right click, create a new preset. I can name it DJ to all, create it, and start adding elements like the two next cross points, for example. So we created now two presets. That's the first step. The second one is how do we manage them? So if we go to the preset section, we can see the, few, the first two presets we created. And by selecting them, we can get a list view of all the elements that belong to this preset. That's one version. The other one is the edit mode. So when I select edit mode, I get a new blue tab that says DJ to all is the preset that's now active. And I have six, six elements in the mix matrix that belong to this preset. So if we go to the mix matrix, and select it, we will see what are these six elements. It's the first six cross points, of course, that we created for this preset. We can toggle between presets, so CD to all. We can recall it and see if all the settings for this preset are fine or it's what we wanted to have. 
then we can go to any other section within Questra, like inputs. Then we can alter the level of the first input channel, for example, add simply this slider as a single element to this preset or mute the second channel and add this element to the preset. Now note, uh, Questra tells us we have two elements in the inputs and six elements in the mix matrix. So creating and managing presets in Questra is just very easy and intuitive. Moving on, outputs. What I would personally do, I would just select the outputs that I know I'm going to use, lower the level, so that once I'm on site, once I deploy my design online, I don't have any accidental loud bursts of sounds or whatever. So I just download, just put them down. And if I know that I'm going to use LD system speakers for my installation, what I do is I can select the preset, which we have, by the way, for the decor series, Maui i1 and Curve 100. And that's basically it. Let's say that the audio is now configured for offline project planning. What we can continue doing now is working on the Questra panel. So when we open the Questra panel, it's a blank design. And we have one screen that's called the home screen. Now we can add more screens. We can rename the other screens. We can rename the first screen, the home screen. But what we cannot do is remove the first home screen. We need at least one screen. And it has to be the home one. So the first one the user sees once he, when he clicks on a display, that is the home page. It can be called whatever you want, but it has to stay as the first tab that you see on the left side. So I created my pages, and now I can start designing them one by one. Of course, you can add typically background images. This can be either custom images, so they are CI conform, or you can use any images from our library that is growing more and more. You can add elements, of course, like graphic elements, labels. This helps you just customize the user panel for your client using the typical editing tools of changing the transparency, the color, etc. So what we're doing here, we are actually creating the first volume slider or fader for the first channel, the CD. And the good thing about Questra panel design is that once you finish the design for the first channel, so let's say this is the design that we wish to have for this control panel. We can then simply select the three elements, copy them, and paste them. And now I just have to replace the label, so rename it to the second channel, DJ, select the fader, and tell it it's now the input of the second channel, DJ. And same goes for the third channel. I change the label, I select the fader, and I tell it it's the fader of the third TV channel. So as you can see, it's very easy, very fast to work in Questra panels. So let's speed up the whole process and see the final result that we can present to our customer before going on site, before doing any installation. So this is not just a visual representation of the final result. We can actually control, as you will see now, the panel within Questra panels. So before deploying it to a physical hardware device, I can show how the panel is going to work for the customer to know and also for me to know if my design is working as it should. So that was design of the configuration file for our EPA amplifier and a Questra panel. Now, when we go on site and deploy this whole thing online, what we do is add a device. And when we add the devices, what Questra does right now is it's scanning the network. So Questra is running on our audio network. It scans for devices, and it can find one Questra panel and one EPA amplifier. So when I drag and drop an online device, you will see that I have two options. One is to add it as a new device, so it's a blank device. I add an amplifier, there's no design. I have to do everything that I already did, right? But I can also add it and pair it to this device, which has a design file. So if I pair it there, I'm actually mapping the physical device to a design file that I already did. So this is what I will do. Link is established. I can deploy my design online to the devices. And that's it. Now, let's check now the dashboard view when we select EPA. So we will see, of course, many more information. We can see input and output activity. We can see the position of the switches and the dip switches on the back panel of EPA. We can see global settings, like, for example, the temperature of the unit or the power su uh, supply unit. And of course, we can see network settings. So it's all there now once we are live 
and we're connected to a device. Good, so if everything is okay, we can start tuning the system. So typically, how do we do it? We select the inputs, we can add more gain to a certain input channel. You can also appreciate the simplicity in the design of Questra. So if there is something that is active, it is in white, like for example, the EQ section, or it is grayed out if it is not being used. So it's very easy to find your way around Questra. It's very intuitive for control. Good. One more thing we wanted to show you uh, in this section is how to use the compact view. So when you select EPA just once, you get the first compact view. And here, you can use the mute button that mutes all outputs. And you can see also the activity in the input and output section. So like the most basic information that you need. Of course, when we launch Questra panels, our panel is now live. So we can now start controlling the system with the panel. And that's it. Basically, the job is done. Last, as they say, but not least, what we wanted to show you today is project administration. You start working in a project in Questra as administrator, meaning you have all the rights. You have read rights, write rights, and you can also create new users. So for example, we will create two new users. The first one can be a simple user, maybe a staff in a restaurant, or user one end. Now, we will create a Questra panels pin. So what is this? The pin is used to actually unlock a certain screen. We will define which screen is actually used by this user. The important thing to know is that Questra generates the pin for you. It, you cannot generate a pin that you wish because I will generate a typical one, two, three, four, five pin. Maybe someone else will also do it and then we all have access to this page, which is not the idea, right? So Questra generates the pin. You can copy it to the clipboard and just paste it in a document where you keep all the pins. And for this user, I will just give him a read-write. So he can just log into Questra, but he can just read the parameters. He cannot change anything, right? But the second user, for example, could be a maintenance person. Now, this is someone who has more power, and he can use Questra and Questra panels. This is why I will give him a password, but it's a password for Questra. So when he logs into Questra, he needs to do it with a password because he has more rights. Like, as you can see, we will give him write-write, and we can also give him the right to administer Questra panels. So we defined two users and we also limited access to certain functions. Now what we do is in Questra panels, we define which panel is controlled by which user. So home panel will be simply, it will be pin free. I want everyone to have access to the home panel, no pin required. But as an example here, we will actually use the other screens, all of them, and assign them to user one, just so that we can show you an example how you need to use the pin to log to a certain screen. So each screen gets the user one as the only person that can access it. And now with this new design, we simply deploy it to our Questra panel. And once we're there, once we're online, the home panel is pin free, so everybody can access it. But if I want to go to the restaurant, I need to enter the pin for user one. And if it's the right pin, sure, I can access it. I can do my settings, adjust them, or whatever I wanted to do, and then simply swipe from left to right and log out. And that's it. Now, if somebody else wants to log to this zone and has entered the wrong pin, access is simply denied. So just to give you an idea how you can actually administer the whole project in Questra and give rights to certain users. So you have seen many features in Questra, of course, but you have to remember that the key feature is that with Questra, uh, it enables you access to the full DSP capabilities of your LD Systems audio device, like for example, our EPA amplifiers. But for the EPA amplifier to work with Questra, you need our optional accessory, which is the expansion card XECI, that stands for Ethernet Control Interface, or the XEDI, which is Ethernet Plus Dante Audio Interface, which gives you additional four inputs and four outputs. So to control the whole system, we use the Questra Panels app, which can be controlled on both Windows computers and or iOS, Android portable devices, but also on our newest 
Questra touch panels, the QDP5 and QDP8, 5-inch and 8-inch touch screens. So these were the most important features we just wanted to show you today, right now. But there are many more features in Questra. Thank you very much. Then that was Questra.